police officers. What's the dumbest thing you've ever seen a criminal do or say? Story one, I was police at the time. In the middle of the night, my partner and I found a car in a cemetery. Stolen cars were dumped there regularly. The car had its windows down and it had only recently been left there. It was still warm to touch. It didn't flag up as stolen and through the window, I could see a meth pipe in plain view. That gives us the ability to search the car. Inside, we find a bunch of meth pipes, three and a half gram of meth, a small amount of cannabis and a handgun. There was also a tablet slash phone that was unlocked. And while we, we were searching the car, the tablet kept on receiving messages from people trying to score meth. I had a quick look through the phone and was able to figure out that the owner of the car had come out from the city. I worked rurally at the time to make a score from one of the local gangs. But the gang didn't want her turning up, so arranged to meet her at the cemetery and conduct business somewhere else. I leave a business card under the wipers, not my card, but the stations. And on the back, I wrote that she, the owner of the car, should come down to the station if she wants to get her stuff back. Uh, and sure enough, she did. At nine the next morning, method out, looking for her sweets and gun. Edit, layout and clarity. Story two, friend who is an officer told me this one a little bit ago. He was driving near where a known car thief lived, so he stops by. SUV in the driveway with no tags. Walks up, runs the VN, stolen. Now the property had a house on it, and then out back, a small mother-in-law suite where said thief lived. Officer walks out back, knocks, and then hears a car door. Officer starts running, engine starts, and yup, thief is driving away in the stolen SUV. Officer knows where he ditches stolen cars at, so has an officer stake out that area. Sure enough, two hours later, the SUV rolls up with a Jeep following it. SUV driver wipes down the dash, wipes down the outside door handle, and gets in the Jeep. Officer pulls them over and arrests them both. Why both? The Jeep is stolen. Officer runs her license. Send another officer to her address, and guess what? She had a stolen car at her place, too. Three stolen cars were covered. Two people in jail, all because one officer decided to stop by a thief's last address. Story three. Not a police officer, but my father was a 911 dispatch operator. My dad was working one night, and he gets a call from a man who is obviously drunk. Dad. 911, what is your emergency? Drunk? Yeah, uh, I think I just heard a red car crash. Dad, uh, you heard a red car crash? Drunk, yeah. Dad, okay, uh, police are on their way. Click my dad finds out later that this dude was driving drunk and crashed his car not far from his house. Guy decides to get out of his car, stumble home, and dial 911 to report the fact that he heard a car crash. In his drunken mind, he figured he'd report the crash as someone who heard it, and he'd get off somehow. But he had to specify the color, because apparently a red car crashing sounds different than a blue car crashing. Story 4. Dad's a detective. Had a murder case where a dog walker found a severed head in a park. Over the rest of the morning, they found a full set of chopped up body parts around that park. A trail of blood led from each part, and they followed them all the way back to a nearby house, in through the door and up the stairs to a room covered in blood with a guy asleep in a bed. Turns out this guy had got drunk with a friend, had an argument, terminated him, chopped him up, and hid his body parts in the park before passing out back at the house. Police caught him literally red-handed. Apparently, he was really confused how they got him so quickly. Story 5. Retired cop here. Boy, do I have stories. One dumbass move a guy did was he steals some poor girl's car. It was her first car. She worked full-time, was a sweet little thing, and we felt so bad, she was crushed. Also in the car, for some reason, was her cell phone. So a colleague who has the gift of talking cow really well calls the number. Dude answers. It goes a little something like this. Cop, mother, you stole my friend's car. Bad guy. Bad person? I will fudge you up then fudge your bad person. Cop, bring it, mother. No cops, no friends. Me and you, I'm at the Chevron on Main Street and 5th. Cat, I'm calling your bad person peach out. Bad guy. Bad person, I'm on my way. Click me. No flipping way she is coming. Dude rounded the corner and pulls into the gas station. We hid our cars behind it, and then when he parked, we boxed him in. He had a gun too. Flipping idiot. On probation, had a loaded gun. Came to us edit and new story by popular demand. A few questions. Yes, he showed up in the stolen car with a friggin' shaved key in the ignition he used to steal it. Because people liked it so much, I talked to the original cop who has the gift of talking cow. He said a few months later in court, the guy claimed the gun was not his. As we found it under the driver's seat. He said it must be hers. So messed up up. But the jury didn't buy it. We saw him shoving something from his waist under his seat when he saw us. Also, yes, the look on his face was classic. It went from I'm going to terminate this dude to the look a prey animal gets when it knows it's messed up. He was terminated a few years later in a chase in another stolen car. Was ejected. DOA new story. Okay, I will give you all another. This one was kind of circumstance that involved me, lol. So, working one busy Saturday night. 
there was a huge brawl with about 20 bros in front of a club. You know, affliction shirts, tap out shirts, and monster energy hats with flat bills galore lol. So we get there and start grabbing dudes, searching real quick, then stuffing them in the nearest car, then jumping back into the fray because we were fighting with them too. So it all passes away down and immediately we get a call. I forget what it was, but we got to go lights and sirens to it. I run to my car, nobody in it. Sweet, I get to go. So I jump in my car and I'm hauling peach lights and siren to this new call for a few men's. Apexing turns, it's 2 a.m. and foggy, not really anyone on the roads. Remember that, 2 a.m. and foggy. So I'm rolling down this street in the fog with my lights and siren, and I see an object with a hoodie on its head slowly slide up behind me in my rear view. The jail's that way. Where are you taking me? I was going fairly fast on a straightaway, and I nearly flipping stacked it up into a pole when I was scared. I jerked the wheel and a little pee came out, I do admit. I pulled over and had to pace a few men's outside the car to calm down. So the guy was stuffed into my car by some other officer, and because he was drunk, he just laid down on the floorboard, put his hoodie on, and passed out. I woke him up by yanking and banking and slamming him into the doors of the car, Lowell. I took him back to the club and no officer claimed him. So I just took the dude home and we laughed about it the whole way. I told him I totally peed. Story 6. Not a police officer, but a witness to a crime who had to give evidence in court. Basically witnessed a girl crashing her car and barrel rolling it into a tree. She was clearly drunk. The fireman arrived after 10 mins. Her car had leaked petrol everywhere. Then her husband shows up on foot and tries to calm her down, followed by her mother in a car and the police. She tried to claim that she wasn't the one driving, even though no one else had been in the car. In court, a year later, she said her mother had been driving, the one who showed up in her own car 10 minutes after the crash. She also punched an officer in the face and was pepper sprayed, but that's a whole other story. Needless to say, she was found guilty. Story 7. DUI Trial Defendant chooses to represent herself. She tries to introduce evidence during the trial, but is quickly blocked by the prosecution. The judge, maybe taking pity on the flaming train wreck that was this woman's defense, asks to see the evidence. It was a receipt from the bar she left before I stopped her that showed that she purchased two large margaritas. Her whole defense was, I couldn't have been drunk after only two margaritas. She was found guilty. My initial reason for stopping her was that she drove down an embankment on the side of the road to get to a McDonald's drive through Story 8. Not a cop, but a corrections officer. Two inmates got into a fight in a hallway. I was the closest to them and only saw the start of the fight out of the corner of my eye. In my report, I wrote that, I saw the two inmates fall to the ground with name on top of other inmate. Later, the hearing sergeant was reading the report to one of the inmates so they could dispute any facts in the report they felt were untrue or biased. He asked the inmate if they wanted to dispute any facts in my report. The inmate said, yeah, we didn't fall to the ground. I grabbed the other inmate and slammed his peach on the floor. What would have been a simple fighting charge turned into an assault charge? Story 9. Woman is waiting for her DUI trial in the courtroom. The lawyers and judge are milling around and getting their paperwork in order. Trial starts in 10. 15 minutes. The prosecuting attorney asks her if she wants to take the plea deal one last time. She refuses and goes on about how this is unconstitutional and the police and courts are corrupt and how is she going to take her kid to school, blah, blah, blah. She is starting to cause a bit of scene, yelling, acting like a child, just being generally annoying. Someone in the room gets a whiff of alcohol. She is out on bond, so she can basically be given a PBT at any time for any reason. Judge orders one on her. She registers a 0.226 in court. This woman who is on trial for DUI had the audacity to drive to court drunk and then moan and groan about how she isn't being treated fairly and we're all corrupt and this is unconstitutional. Not only that, but it explicitly states in your bond conditions that you cannot consume alcohol. So I cuff her and bring her to the jail. She's still running her mouth during the walkover. I had nothing to say. I had absolutely zero sympathy for her. I could barely hold in my laughter on the walkover to the jail. Story 10. In a city near to me, a guy murdered a woman put her body in a large garment bag, and left her in a vacant lot. Unfortunately for him, he forgot to take the tags with his name and address off the bag from a recent flight. A would-be bank robber wrote his hold-up note and put it into his wallet. He got rattled at the bank and accidentally left his driver's license on the counter when he handed the note to a teller. A third crook just took on more than he could handle and apparently didn't watch the time. He had a long history of asterisk grand theft auto asterisk and was hospitalized after being badly beaten in the parking lot of a sports area After a lacrosse game, the guy swore up and down that he had no idea why anyone would assault him there. Story 11. There are so many to choose from, but one sticks out. Dude decides that his dildo no longer is doing the trick by itself, so he uses his creative liberty to construct an apparatus to enhance his experience. 
He takes his once boring Ols dildo and bolts it in an upright position on the top of his nightstand to create the Megatron of close relationship toys. Unfortunately for him and us, he found himself unable to disengage from his new toy. Evidently, the once pleasurable toy was now a torture device because his screams of agony were alarming, loud enough to get the attention of his neighbor, who called 911. After 10 minutes of unsuccessful attempts by police and EMS to remove Homeboy from his device, we ultimately had to unbolt the toy from the nightstand and transport him to the hospital with the toy still intact. Story 12. This happened just last week. Officers attend a house at about 0500 hours looking for a wanted man. Let's call him Mr. A. A woman answers the door and officers explain their reasoning and ask to come in for a search. She allows it. Whilst searching the bedroom, an officer opens the wardrobe and finds a male in there. Officer. What's your name? Man. I'm Mr. B. Officer. Why are you hiding in the wardrobe, Mr. B? I'm not allowed to be here. There's a restraining order between me and her. We still don't know why he admitted everything he had done. Officers knew he wasn't Mr. A as they'd seen a photo of him. It turned out Mr. B had only just come out of a prison sentence, which he served because he broke the previous restraining order, and upon his release, went straight to her. He was not a clever man. Story 13. My Bill is a cop in a small town. Pulled a car over one night, recognized the kid, smelled candy inside the car and said, give me the candy and I won't search your car, won't give you a ticket, and you can be on your way. Kid fights him, says he doesn't know what that smell is, there's no candy. And how can I trust that you won't take me to the station if I give it to you? Bill promises again that if he hands him the candy, he will let him go. No questions asked. Kid keeps being a moron. Bill searches the car and finds many, many, many more sweets hidden all over, as well as candy. BL says, all right, let's go to the station. Kid gets upset and says, You said you weren't going to do this. See, I couldn't trust you. I groan and laugh every time I think of that. What a dummy. Story 14. Arrested a guy for shooting candy in the parents' room of a shopping center. Walked in while he had the needle in his arm. We stare at each other for a bit. Then he comes out with, I'm a diabetic. I cuff him. Leave my partner to do the search while I read caution and rights. Old mate is not diabetic, and we know this because he's got 87 prior convictions for use slash possession slash trafficking suites. I go through the usual, you do not have to say or do anything spiel, then say, do you understand these rights? He's totally cooked on candy at this point, and he just looks at me and goes, you want to get dinner tonight? It's not the worst response I've had to caution, and writes though, asterisk, asterisk, edit, asterisk, asterisk. I had no idea this would gain the amount of comments it did. There seems to be loads of questions in the replies, so if anyone has any for me, feel free to DM me and I'll answer them. For clarification, I'm in Australia, hence differences in the legal system. Story 15, not a cop, but my brother was. He told me that this one time he took lunch at Poppy's while in uniform except for the hat. Once inside, the cashier started taking his order, then stopped halfway and turned to a co-worker that just walked up. I don't remember exactly what was said, but basically the guy taking my brother's order asks the other guy if he took his candy. The other guy says yes, but he didn't breathe at all and proceeded to hand him over the candy. The guy then says cool not to worry that he's got another stash in his car for emergencies like this. My brother then said that he just wanted to eat some lunch. The guys then realized he was a cop. One guy said something like not again. As my brother started arresting the cashier, he said that he thought my brother was the security guard. So my brother just trying to make a joke out of it says oh you breathe candy with your security guard? To which the guy says no just my manager and his buddy. But the real funny part was when he asked another employee there if the security guard was around. And the employee said they didn't have one and didn't know what that cashier was talking about. Story 16. Copied mine from a previous similar thread. In law enforcement, but not a regular cop. Middle of search warrant looking for a bloke. Lots of candy convictions in the past. Found a still burning blunt in the ashtray in the living room. But no sign of the guy in the house. I am 99% sure he is in the roof cavity. I announced to my partner. I think he is up there. Should we look? Suddenly the ceiling starts talking. Hear the softest. No. Hey, hey. Cow. Can they hear me? Nay, it's all good, so my partner said in a man. I didn't hear that guy say we shouldn't look up there. Ceiling replies with, sweet, I knew they wouldn't find me. Needless to say, we looked and pulled a very, very stoned guy out from under the insulation bats. Side note, they make you itchy AF, so be careful choosing your hiding spots when you're stoned. Story 17, NAC but my ex is. And he told me once that they got a call because a gas station just got robbed by a guy in a ski mask with a gun. Witnesses say that he ran away but got into a car about a block away and drives off. X is driving down the side street and sees a guy driving the opposite direction with a ski mask on. Flips around and lights him up. Guy pulls over. 
X gets him out of the car and puts handcuffs on him and checks the car. And lo and behold, there's the cash and cigarettes and the beer and the gun. Guy is honestly shook and keeps asking how they knew it was him. X pulls Guy's ski mask off. Story 18. Holy cow and ask Reddit for me finally. Well, I am an officer in a small town, and I deal with meth a lot, so I couldn't even begin to say all the absurd cow I've heard. However, this one call stands out. I am dispatched to a house for a 911 hang-up call. I pull up to the residence and someone yells, We're in here! My backup ran up to the door to see two men run out the back door. So I haul Flipping Peach to the back and see them both tell them politely to get the fudge over here. I ask the elderly man what's going on. He said for sure a domestic. The young guy says nothing happened and so does everyone else there. Well, I'm fed up and start really hitting this elderly guy with questions until he finally tells me that his son, the younger guy, beat the hell out of everyone in the house and that his ribs feel broken. So naturally, I tell my backup and arrest the younger guy. Side note, none of the people that were hurt wanted to press charges. On the way to jail, this guy starts bawling his eyes out, and I always try to empathize in some form and be nice. I mean, I already got him hooked up and on the way to jail, so my adrenaline is gone. Anyways, he's crying like a little baby, and his reaction to my nice words, which were, look at it this way. You're going away for a bit, but it's a chance to straighten your cow out. His immediate reply, sobbing with snot and tears, says, nah, man, fudge you. You'll never know what it's like to be a big dog. I caps the last part because he flipping screamed it at the top of his sobbing lungs. I say, okay, little buddy, let's just get you to your bed. The end. It's not too wild, but it still makes me laugh. Story 19. Not a cop, but rode along frequently as part of a training program. The dumbest thing I saw someone do involved one of those dog crates that you can carry. Like for a small dog, such as a chihuahua. This woman was having a dispute with some people who had their dog in one of those carry kennels sitting on the ground. There were three officers at the scene. The woman was given a ticket and tossed it on the ground. She was told, pick that up or you will be arrested for littering. When she picked it up, she kicked the dog kennel hard enough to make it barrel roll. She was immediately and aggressively taken into custody and charged with animal cruelty. Edit. Since this gained some popularity, let's hate this woman because she was the most annoying person I have ever interacted with. She called 911 to say that there were people she didn't know squatting in her garage apartment and they had a knife. We got there and the squatters had tons of regular people belongings that did not match the profile of squatters. Additionally, all of their belongings were strewn along the ground outside in the alleyway. They had texts proving that they had been renting from her and they said that they were two days late on rent. She went crazy and threw all of their stuff outside. The knife that they supposedly had was one of their steak knives that had come out of a shelf that she dumped in the alley. She had also allegedly shoved one of them. By the time we had sorted this all out, the woman had vanished. The officer told them to go ahead and put their stuff back inside and that she'd have to evict them. At this point, they didn't want to press any charges, so we just left to drive around and told them to call back if they had more problems. They called back within 10 minutes. She'd come back and shoved one of them, throwing another temper tantrum. The ticket she got was for assault by contact, and the rest is history. Tossed the ticket on the ground, kicked their dog, and got taken to jail. The best part was that the whole ride to jail, she was continuing her tantrum, asking how she was going to jail when she called the police and she didn't do anything wrong. No matter how many times she said that she didn't do anything wrong or that she shouldn't go to jail, though, that's exactly where she ended up. Story 20. I used to ride my bike to and from work back home, and most of my route was passing through horse country. Lots of small ranches and stuff. I was pedaling home at 1 a.m. Sonic closes at midnight back home. When I saw two of my neighbor's horses being ridden very poorly by two strangers. Now, I'm not a horse expert, but the fact the saddles were on backwards and not actually connected at all, was my first clue something was amiss. And the fact one of them was yelling, Damn it, Jim! I ain't going to jail over a oh no horse over and over was my second clue. So I call the cops, then my neighbor, who owns the horses. Unfortunately, my neighbor got to them before the cops did, so the cops had quite a mess on their hands. I ended up almost an hour late getting home because I had to help get the horses back. Neighbor got his own ride in a squad car. Both drunks needed an ambulance. His wife was able to help me get the tack off and brush them down. She was wheelchair bound, but told me what to do. Neighbor was grateful, once bail was posted, and hooked me up with free rides to and from work whenever I needed. And I got to learn quite a bit about horsemanship. I heard the cops had a laugh. Edit. People keep asking what my neighbor did. It involved a cattle prod and chicken wire. And no, I won't elaborate. And yes, he got a lenient sentence, but this is Florida, so our reasoning behind fines or jail time is weird. Story 21. Many, many years ago, I used to work for the court service, so would get talking to the cops about the latest ridiculous cow. Um, My favorite was a couple of students who had their house broken into and everything stolen. 
The cop said when he went to take statements, etc., these two guys were sitting cross-legged on the floor because the place had been completely emptied. Over the next couple of days, he gets another call out. Same block, but the place next door meets the guy at the door who is making a noise complaint for the two students next door. Cop knocks on the student's door. It would appear that they are still without possessions with the exception of a stereo someone had lent them, as they literally had nothing left, and they were getting drunk with music on to drown their sorrows. They apologize, turn down the music, and close the door. Cop goes back to the complainer to tell him they will now be quiet. And as he's having this conversation, can see in the hallway lots of pieces of electronics, furniture, etc. As yes, having this conversation, he looks through his notebook and is ticking all these items off the list of stolen stuff from next door. Students got their stuff back. Lesson? If you're going to burgle your next door neighbor, don't invite the cops around to complain about them. Story 22. Not a police officer, but an ex of mine was out wandering in a wooded area of their town, drunk off their face. At some point, my ex, let's call him Twat Waffle, passes out in a field near a school and some apartments and his friends just leave him there. Someone sees Twat Waffle laying in the field and calls the cops, worried that's it's a dead body. Cop comes, nudges the body, and Twat Waffle starts to wake up. Blackout drunk, he leaps up all aggressive like causing the cop to jump back and place his hand on his nightstick. Twat Waffle drunkenly screams, what are you going to do? Hit me with your stick? And charges the cop who then attempts to swing the stick. He punches the cop, runs about 10 feet, then lays back down and falls asleep. Cop pepper sprays and arrests him. Twat Waffle remembers nothing. Detailed police report is how I know what happened. It 100% sounds like the stupid cow Twat Waffle would do frequently. He had to go to court, charged with assault on an officer. The officer insisted charges be dropped to drunk in public since he wasn't entirely responsible for his actions because of how shmammered he was. After that, any time he told the story, it was about some unpleasant person cop, when in reality, that cop saved his peach. Edit. Nightstick Lowell. Story 23. Need to clarify that I'm not a cop, but was able to witness the events that unfolded. Loss prevent and two cops had escorted a woman into the side office of our store. She made her presence known by her constant yelling and screaming, I didn't do anything wrong. You've got to let me go. She was caught shoplifting on site. Also well-known offender. Turns out she had hit the whole center that afternoon. She constantly refused to answer their questions, but kept repeating, You've got to let me go. One of the cops humored her and asked, Why do we need to let you go? I'm in court. You've got to let me go. I'm on my lunch break. I can't be late. Last I heard when they walked her out of the center that she made a break for it straight back to the courthouse. Turns out she was on a lunch break from her court hearing for shoplifting. Made a break for it back to the courthouse. Story 24. So we are partying at one of our friends' place, and cops stop by to check, what's with all the commotion? I know that because they told me that there weren't any complaints or anything. So, I am dealing with the cops. When my friend, who is high AF, decides to join in, he starts speaking in our native tongue, which the cops don't understand. Anyhow, one of the cops raises his right hand and waves three fingers in front of my friend's face asking him, how many fingers are these? To which my friend replies, still in our native language, thankfully, why do you drink so much that you are even unable to count your own fingers, sir? Story 25, fairly big time dealer being interviewed, managed to go no comment entire interview. Keeping up my nice guy tactics, I apologize for the formality of having to go through the interview. To which he replies, no problem, it's just some young blood trying to get in on my business. The look on his lawyer's face, priceless. Edit to answer some questions one. It was pretty heavily implied by him that he believed younger gang members had tipped us off and to steal customers. He's a big enough player that he knows. We know what he does, but we have to prove it and link it directly to him. 2. Sadly, that comment is nowhere near enough to work in a court of law. Story 26. Not a cop, but told to me by a cop. Friend's grandmother's house was abandoned and waiting to be sold. Squatter thieves broke in and took the valuable stuff. Then when they realized no one was using the house... They started staying there and bringing items that they had stolen from other houses to stash there. Cops came with dogs. Crook ran from the dog upstairs, then out the balcony door where there was once a balcony. Instead, he ran out a second-story door to nowhere and fell two stories. Police didn't have much trouble catching him after that. He was squatting there and had looted the house. So how did he not know that that door went nowhere? Story 27. Not a cop. But I know for sure this is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen someone do. Several years ago, some friends and I are hanging out when my friend brings along this new co-worker trying to get him out and about. Immediately, we all knew something was off about this guy, but whatever, we were out until 3 in the morning before we call it a night. My friend is bringing me home and just being an idiot decides to swerve down the street before getting to my house. Well, we pass a cop car and the car hits its lights but had to turn around. 
By this point, I'm out the car when the cop is pulling up on us and this new guy makes a run for my front door. Cop jumps out his vehicle and demands all of us on the ground, just about waking up everyone in my neighborhood. Turns out, this dude had a warrant out for his arrest, and he decided bolting out the car was the smartest move to make when a cop pulled up on us. Story 28. Not really a criminal, but blew my mind at the stupidity of it. A dad had full custody of his son, cuss baby mama homeless and on sweets. Baby mama is allowed supervised visits at dad's house a couple of hours per week. During the holidays, dad lets baby mama take son out unsupervised, violating his own court order, and later refused to return son and would not pick up her phone. Dad says he has no idea where they could be. I take missing persons form, and a couple hours later, I was about to file the form and dispatch tells me to call an officer from another city. The father went to his son's grandma's house, which was located in that other city. The son is there, but baby mama refused to turn over her son. It's a big, stupid mess. After talking to that officer, we get everything sorted, and dad was finally reunited with son. I fill out a missing person cancellation form and turn both forms in. A few days later, I see on my MDT a pending call from that same address for the same exact reason. I was about ready to drive over there and yelled at the father for being an idiot. But I was on another call and one of my partners took the call. Story 29. Many years ago, I was a paramedic in NYC and got involved with a stabbing theft. It was a chain snatch gone bad, and the snatcher and snatchy both shanked one another. The one kid lost his femoral and passed away on the street. The spread of the blood on wet concrete was amazing. It seemed like 20 people bled to death there. The attempted snatcher took off running, but the cops were pretty sure he didn't get far, so we all fanned out to look for blood trail or his unconscious self. Long story short, there was a chrome plating and engine machine shop on one corner of the block. The kid had crawled up a stack of pallets and across a storage container and pushed in a jealousy type window. He didn't know it was over the acid dip tank they put big diesel blocks in to clean them before work. He put up a hell of a fight trying to get out, but was found Monday morning partially dissolved. Story 30 so I'm not a cop, but worked LP. This one time I caught this guy going up and down aisles, eating different varieties of OTC pills, Tylenol, sleep meds, and whatever else he grabbed. And I mean literally eating them by just throwing them in and chewing them like candy. I stop him when he goes outside and get him to come back and notice this dude is messed up up beyond messed up up and call the police. The police come and search him, of course, and find a spoon in his pocket. The officer asks, what's this spoon for? And the guy goes, oh, me and my girlfriend, we're going to go eat some soup. Completely serious and in no way condescending. Story 31. I'm not a police officer, however, I have a crazy idiot of an older brother. Cops are investigating a carjacking in the area and are trying to locate the car. Popular model 2, Nissan Altima. Cops are just checking the plates of my brother's car. Again, lunatic idiot comes out and cursing the cops out. Everything was recorded by the cops' cams and his friend's phone. My favorite part was, and proceed to swing at the cops. Then he starts crying out for my parents and that these cops. Cops drop the assault charges. However, he's being charged with interfering with investigation. The dumbass is actually trying to fight this currently, saying they used police brutality on and targeted him. I'm once again siding with the police on this one, buddy. Story 32. Crossing the border from USA going into Canada when we were 19. 20, since the legal drinking age there is 19. We were always too smart to say we were going to the bars, though so we would always make something else up like the casino or a nice restaurant. It always felt like we were trying to outsmart the border police, so we always got a little nervous talking at the booth. I was the passenger this time. Border cop. Citizenship. Driver. USA border cop. Any sweets, alcohol, weapons in the car? Driver. No border cop. Where are you guys going tonight? Driver Canada. The border cop have us a sigh and a look like, fudge these kids from the U.S. Story 33. Back in the 70s when cops had more leniency than they do today as far as letting people off the hook. My uncle was a sheriff's deputy for the county I live in. He said he was following behind a car one afternoon and said the driver was clearly under the influence because he had been weaving back and forth and failing to maintain his lane. About the time my uncle was going to pull him anyways, the guy ran his car up onto the median and stalled out his car. So my uncle pulls up behind him and flips his lights on. My uncle said by the time he had walked up to this guy's driver's window, this guy, drunk as cow, had managed to climb into the passenger seat and get his St. Bernard into the driver's seat. My uncle leaned down and asked what the hell was going on here, and he said this guy with a straight face and serious as could be responded with, I told that oh no dog he wasn't going to make that curve. My uncle doubled over laughing and gave the guy and his dog a ride home in his cop car and called a tow truck to tow his car. He told the man that was the best line he had ever heard in his entire career. Story 34 I'm not a cop, but here in Brazil, someone tried to rob her at gunpoint. He left his car running so that he could make a quick getaway. 
While he was inside, putting all of the money inside a bag, someone stole his car. He leaves. And while he's dumbfounded about the car theft, a third thief runs and steals the bag with all of the money. So he goes to a police station to report the theft of his car. While in there, he's recognized by the owner of the there to report the robbery. The car? He had stolen it a week before. Asterisk, asterisk, Brazil. There's a thief in every corner. Memorable quote. Things are so dangerous that you leave your house to commit robbery and come back poorer. Asterisk, asterisk, edit, asterisk, asterisk. Apparently, I've been fooled. The video and story are fake. I apologize for not researching this properly. Story 35. Not a cop, of course, but I work with CPS. A social worker I know told me of this old case. CPS receives a call that a single mom has severely beaten her 12 yo daughter yesterday and the neighbors heard it. As is procedure in this case, cops and social worker show up to pick up the girl as soon as they get the okay from the boss because there is a risk of more injuries and severe beatings. They usually try to meet up with the supposed victim first and see what to do from there since we often get false reports, so they show up at their house. Cops usually avoid confronting the parent in this, but there's no avoiding her. They try to pick the girl up for a checkup, but the mom reacts by asterisk, assaulting her daughter with a knife, one, asterisk, assaulting the cop, restraining her, two, asterisk, go in complete angry meltdown while admitting to forcing her daughter to participate in orgies, selling her body, distributing photos and videos, and forcing her to do hard sweets, plus beating her. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so went from suspect to confirmed psycho in two minutes. Edit, formatting and words. Story 36, friend of mine is a police officer in Munich, Germany. At one place in Munich, there is a building where Hitler lived for a while. That's quite famous. Nowadays, there is a police station in that building. Some American tourists seem to have known the first but not the latter. So they came up from the subway, saw the building and thought it would be very funny to stand in a line and do the iconic Hitler greeting, you know, the right arm raised in a straight line, to an active police station full of officers. They soon learned that German police doesn't think it's funny to use that greeting, as it is prohibited as an anti-constitutional symbol, so they got arrested for several hours. Story 37. I don't know if this fits here, but it's sort of along the lines of crims saying dumb things. This goes back a long time. But my dad tells a story of when photocopiers first came to be used by the police, a senior detective would bring in guys he knew to be break and enter guys and sit them down, then ask to see the watch or jewelry etc. they had on them. He would then tell them he is going to go the new stolen item detector, photocopier, and run a search. After writing stolen on a sheet of paper and photocopying the watch on top, he would return to the interview room. Tell the perk that the gig is up. They know the watch is stolen. It is better for you to just tell us where it came from. Apparently, nine-tenths, the guy would confess to several crimes, assuming the stolen item detector knew all of his wrongdoings. Story 38. One night, another officer and I had been tracking a stolen cell phone and narrowed it down to one problem complex in one of the more rougher parts of town. As we're waiting outside for the phone to move again, these kids pull up to the exit in a black Kia and immediately stop when they see our patrol car. Then they try to throw the car in reverse and all bail. There's like four jumping out and the front passenger starts rolling around on the ground as the car starts rolling backwards due to being on an incline. He nearly gets run over and we drive up and run after them on foot. We lose them in the building hallways, end up tracking the driver to an apartment because we were still tracking the phone. He had gotten ahead of us, run into his grandmother's apartment, ditched his clothes and tried to jump into the shower. As we're knocking on the door, his grandmother answers and says he just got home a bit ago and that there wasn't a stolen phone in the house. She even brings us his dirty clothes to prove it, even though he's trying to pull the hole, those aren't my pants, BS. We hit the ringer on the phone, and it goes off in her place, and she's shocked. Walk into the kitchen and find the phone in a cereal box on top of the fridge. So he gets locked up. As we're putting him into the patrol car, we find out the Kia rolled down the incline into two parked cars. His aunt pulls up and realizes he took her car without her knowing. Got charged with all of it, and I'm pretty sure his aunt was going to try and make him pay for all the damages. Edit. Also had a guy end up in the hospital with a broken jaw, dislocated shoulder and wrist, and giant gash in his chin due to falling 12 feet off a ledge as he was running away from a car crash. His head had landed on some cinder blocks. We had tried to pull him over for an expired license plate, but he fled and took a turn too fast. Wrecked into two parked cars. It was dark and he told us he kept looking back as he was running so he never saw the ledge he fell off of. Why did he flee? Because he didn't have a driver's license. Story 39. Lee background. But the dumbest thing I've ever heard that fits this description predates that and it came from a friend from high school. For some reason, I have a long history of people trying to rationalize whatever they've engaged into me by saying no 
and giving me the definition of whatever it was instead. The subject of sweets came up, and he said he had never done them, but that he had gotten them for his boss. I asked him to elaborate, and he said his boss gave him some money, which he then gave to a girl he knew, and they drove across town to a candy dealer's house, where she went in and purchased it. She then gave him the substance which he took back to his boss. I said, so you engaged in candy trafficking? And he said no, and then repeated the story, to which I replied, that's exactly what candy trafficking is. Other highlights from dumb friends. No, I'm not on steroids. I'm on synthetic hormones that encourage muscle growth. So he's flying in from out of state and you bought him candy? Yeah, did he pay you for it? No, we haven't discussed the price yet. I'd let it go. Why? He owes me money. Yes, and the minute he pays you money for candy, in this particular state especially, you've just become a candy dealer. Story 40. Here's my own. So there I was on New Year's Eve. I spent the evening with my buddies and was getting ready to drive home. At the time, I didn't drink. But my new roommate did, so my friend gave me the opened bottle of champagne in case she wanted some, since we had quite a bit left. On the way home, on the freeway, I must have turned the corner too sharply and gone out of the lines, because the state patrolman behind me flashed his lights. So the officer shows up, and the first thing he says is, Hey buddy, why the hell didn't you pull onto the shoulder? Since I was in the leftmost lane of the two-lane highway at the time, I pulled over into the median. I guess I had been so startled I hadn't thoroughly thought about it. The next thing the officer did was gesture at the comically large half-empty bottle of champagne looming in the passenger seat and say, Is that an open alcoholic beverage? To which I smartly explained that I had put the cork back in it. So no, he asked to see my license. I handed over my license and with a quick glance told me it was invalid. You see, I had received a speeding ticket a few months beforehand and had been paying it off in installments. But I missed one. This was during the recession and times were lean. And an officer pulled me over shortly after and told me my license had been suspended until I got back and he had taken a hole punch to my license. Just stamped a round little hole right through it, apparently to mark it as invalid. Well, I got back on the payment plan and had paid off my ticket. But nobody had mentioned to me that I needed to go to the DMV and request a new license. So I never did. Because it just hadn't occurred to me, even though my license literally had a hole in it. After sputtering my excuses to the trooper, he soon came to the conclusion that I wasn't drunk, but was merely very stupid and more trouble than I was worth. He told me that he was going to let me off with a warning and that he was not giving me permission to drive the rest of the way home. But he also told me that my car couldn't just sit there and he was going to drive off. And should my car find a way home somehow, that it was none of his business. Nice guy. Story 41. Once upon a time, somebody broke into my car while I was under the influence of a heavy dose of LSD. I went directly to the station with a buddy of mine to file the report, a police station with very particular acoustics that made it almost impossible to whisper without everyone hearing very well. I had trouble giving my details because every time the officer asked me a question, like my name, date of birth, etc., I felt compelled to fish out my ID card to double-check that I was getting it right, which was clearly generating some suspicion. While the officer was completing a form, my buddy suddenly pulled me aside, showed me a small packed straw in in the palm of his hand, and whispered, Oh my God, I still have speed on me. The officer had been so busy writing, she somehow didn't notice, but the anxiety of him saying it out loud made my world spin. A short time passed, seeming like ages, and then he looked at me again and said, Oh no, my hands are really dirty. I looked at my own and exclaimed, very loudly and clearly, These aren't my fingers! All the officers in the precinct immediately dropped whatever they were doing and stared at me. I'm just kidding. Of course, Jesus, was I grateful to get out of there. Two decades later, and I still don't understand how. Story 42. I had a cop try to give me a ticket for sleeping in my car on the side of the road in a residential area. I was too tired to continue driving home after a visit with my sis, so I took a ramp off the interstate and parked and took a nap to avoid an accident, literally doing what they recommend to avoid endangering people on the road. I forget the charge, but he basically tried to slap me with some fine that particular area gives to homeless people. Homeless people. If they loiter or hang around too long, took me a full half hour to convince the guy I wasn't homeless, I was leaving to drive the rest of the way home ASAP, and I was doing what I knew to be safe and that the two fire engines and three squad cars they deployed were insanely unnecessary even if I was. Guy just seemed pissed as I was to get a call in the night from whatever rich couldn't handle some guy taking a car nap and minding his own damn business. Story 43. Had a cop once follow me for about 20 minutes at 3 a.m. because my friend in the passenger seat knocked on the window of the car beside us at a stoplight. We knew the person in the car, that's why he did it. 
cop finally pulls us over on some random country roadway outside town. He couldn't even remember why he stopped us because he had been following us for so long. When I asked him why he followed us for so long rather than just stopping us right away, he said, man, it's three in the morning. That's how long it took me to wake up the dispatch guy to call this in. Eventually, he remembered why he stopped us, and we just said we knew the guy, and he was like, oh, okay, and left. Other time I got pulled over for driving too slow down a hill. On big hills, I usually just downshift and let it roll rather than burn out my brakes. And the look of shame on the cop's face that he didn't think of that and immediately assumed I was drunk was kind of funny, but he was pretty young, probably not much older than me, so I kind of felt bad for the guy. Story 44. Some family reported their car as stolen. When I asked them to come to the station for the hearing, they just told me it was never stolen. They left it in a car dealer to be sold. The business went wrong, and the dealer would not pay them what they wanted or return the car. So they reported it stolen, because that way the police will get the car back faster. They were very simple people, and I figured a way not to screw them over this. Edit. I forgot to mention all of this was in Brazil. The law may be different in other countries, and define such situation as theft. Edit 2. Since this got a reasonable attention, and people are asking how it is not theft, I'll reproduce a few of the answers I gave to the comments. A. It was on consignment. Thanks, you cute. We, they verbally agreed to let the car on the dealer, transferred the title to the dealer, and would receive a set amount of money for it once it was sold. The dealer did sell the car, but shortly after went broke and could not fulfill his end of the agreement. They were aware of the situation, and in order to get the car back ASAP, the falsely reported it as stolen, saying it was parked outside their house at night and gone by the morning. When I called them to hear more about it, they told me the truth saying the report was just a way to get the car back faster. Falsely reporter a crime is a crime in Brazilian law. B, I said simple people, but it was a bad choice of words. I meant uneducated people. C, why is not theft under Brazilian law? Brazilian law crime has different conducts that are defined as crime. Simplified, it goes like this. Theft, tooking something from someone while they are not aware. X, stealing a car parked on the street, pickpocketing. Robbery. Using violence or serious threatening to compel someone to give you something. X. Robbing someone at gunpoint. Unlawful appropriation. Giving something to someone under the condition that they will return it after a set amount of time. And them this person simply keeps it for good. X. Lend you my car for one week. After that time, you won't return to it to me. Scamming. Using fraud to convince someone to give you something that he, she does not own you. X. Selling somebody the title to real estate on the moon. These are the crimes more closely related to the situation that happened. Still, can you see that none of them perfectly fit the conducts? That's the case. They let the car with the dealer, so no stealing or robbery. It was not intended to be returned to them, so no unlawful appropriation. The dealer got the car in good faith, but went broke and couldn't fulfill his part of the deal, so no scamming. That's why I'm saying it was not a criminal matter. It has to be settled in a civil court. The dealer probably declare bankruptcy, I declare bankruptcy, and the family is put in a list of people they own money to. Probably the judge will re the car and give it back to them. And whoever bought the car in good faith will also be put in that list. It's pretty complex. Some people like employees have priority over other creditors, e all that. Long things short, the dealer went broke and couldn't fulfill their verbal agreement. As many others' agreements he struck, I assume. Civil court will probably confiscate his assets in order to pay his creditors. Sorry for any misspelled words, not my first language.